process and uh, are working on uh, their own and uh, watching signals, uh, first thing uh, you need to do is actually uh, every day before you look uh, in for, for ranges, trends and uh, other changes, you need to go to correlations page. Uh, and the correlations page actually has a lot of uh, information that uh, is very important. And uh, so today's goal, uh, before I start talking about my overall views, uh, what I what I'm uh, thinking for the next uh, two weeks uh, regarding trading. First, I will um, talk about what happened and uh, how I interpret this. So the most important correlations to start with are stock bond correlations, because stock bond correlations for us, uh, these are telling us what regime we are in. And uh, I know that uh, a lot of people uh, we already are familiar with the fact that negative stock bond correlation is more of a normal regime. So that's what you sh would expect from uh, stock bond correlations. You expect them to be negative. But uh, what uh, one part uh, that uh, people is missing is not only the changes in correlation and to which direction we are moving, but also which which asset is leading. And uh, today I will uh, stress a lot about that. What I mean is when you get a negative stock bond correlation, you should actually first look for signals for bonds because uh, if you see that correlations are going down or, or, or even are already negative and moving down, but uh, TLT, for example, just turned bullish and the upside downside ratio is in your favor and so on, uh, then you should reverse your thinking because in normal regime, a lot of people think, okay, stock bond correlations negative. It means normal regime, buy stocks and happy life. So not exactly. You buy stocks if uh, stock bond correlation is negative and, uh, and uh, stocks are outperforming uh, bonds and uh, signals for stocks are more bullish than for bonds. I hope this thing is clear. So first of all, I will... Uh, show I show a couple of charts that I want to. Yeah, so so here I have uh, yeah here I have rolling ten day TLT correlations versus spy, and also I will open uh, another table which is actual actual yeah actual time series of the correlations for the last month month or so. Uh, so what I want to say is that uh, the rate of change is very important, and you need to write those down uh, every day or or plot plot them in Excel or or or, or somewhere. We will add it on MFR as well. But uh, when correlations are positive and and moving up, the regime is uh, of positive stock bond correlations, and I will explain what that regime is and what to do. But uh, we see that uh, correlations peaked actually in the end of uh, July. From this time series, we see that uh, actual peak was uh, July 31st was the stock bond correlations were 0 0.68. And then they started reducing. And when, when I tweeted that uh, they are collapsing, actually, uh, this was the sign. So, like I said, today will be more about the hindsight because because I can't stress that enough how inform, important it is in my uh, process and the, and of course in my opinion. So I want people to really understand what to look for. So you don't wait for correlations to get negative. Uh, when you see that these correlations are going down, it's al al already a sign. It's already a sign that things are starting to change. And then, of course, when, when they are going negative, you also check whether they are uh, reversing or, or they are continuing to go lower and lower and lower. This rate of change is very important. And uh, again, there was a question, which period correlations to start with? So I always start with 10 days and then move to 30 days. Five-day correlation is the last because that one is very choppy. Uh, but we see this on 10 days, and actually we see the exact same thing on 30-day correlation. We see the exact 
same thing on 30 day correlations. Now I'm opening the chart. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, sorry about that. And uh, of course, 30 day correlations are uh, slower. Same, same applies for any signal or any indica indicator which has a higher look back period. The higher the look back period, the slower it moves. Uh, but the peak, the peak was here, and uh, I every single day I I write them down and write the rate of change of those. And whenever you see that stock bond correlations are actually uh, decreasing, not necessarily negative, decreasing, that should be the first warning sign. Later I will show you uh, more warning signs, but that would be the first warning sign for you to maybe maybe reduce your risk. Uh, but uh, reducing risk means different things for different people depending on their portfolios, of course. But but uh, reducing equity positions is a very, very uh, smart decision. So now we have some dates. Uh, we have uh, some dates that, uh, for example, 10-day correlation peaked in the end of uh, July and then started to go down. So I then you check fixed income signals. So in this case, it's TLT, but of course, SHY and other proxies uh, are also important as well. But uh, even because of some people say, oh, I only trade equities or I only trade equity ETFs or whatever. Uh, everyone who uh, is in this business for, for a long time and, and understands the the relationship between the different assets and capital flows, because this is what it is, it's capital flows, understands that that equity trader always needs to monitor fixed income. Even if you have no interest in buying or, or selling TLT, doesn't matter, it will save you a lot of money. So what you, well, what you had to look for is that TLT is bullish trend for quite a while. Yeah, we had a uh, day of, of neutral, uh, and uh, and even before July 5th, uh, it was neutral for a couple of days. But uh, for me, when uh, an, any asset switch from bearish to neutral is like a get ready mode. I still usually wait for, for assets uh, to go from neutral to bullish. But then you see this, correlations are going down and bonds are bullish. And at the same time, uh, we can compare it on a chart that uh, stocks were weak. Uh, stocks were uh, basically at their all-time highs, but uh, those who watch order flow know that uh, the last uh, days uh, at all-time highs were very weak. Very weak, it means uh, market tried to push forward, but it failed. Uh, but this is not a process. I'm not telling you people to watch order flow. It's not. I mean, no, no one needs that. Only day traders need that. But, but the momentum in stocks was already weakening. So first, you know. So if stock bond correlations are going down, and even better, uh, going down and negative, and bonds are bidding. So you see in the signals that uh, there are trends and momentum uh, for bonds that is signaling bullish. Uh, then it, it, it's not the time to, to buy stocks. And uh, again, I will take responsibility because for a couple of shows I was uh, talking that uh, I will stay in cash, uh, I will not buy uh, stocks. But actually, these, these were the reason. This were the reason. Uh, bonds are bullish. Even when the stock bond correlation was uh, positive, and I just showed you the chart, that it was positive and going up for quite a while. Even then, it's important to watch bullish, uh, bullish signals for bonds. But at least when you know that everything is uh, highly correlated, at least you know that you can still stay uh, in equities uh, for a while. And actually, uh, there are even hedge fund strategies that are very, very simple, but uh, works quite well, which basically uh, what they do uh, on a monthly basis, uh, if stocks uh, outperform bonds for the last 12 months, you keep stocks for one more month and then repeat uh, over because they understand this correlation. 
when bonds start outperforming or catching up to stocks, it's the first time that you need to reduce risk. It's the same approach, but uh, on a longer term basis for a strategy example for those who are doing active portfolio management. But first, I wanted to stress that. First, I wanted to, to stress that, and I hope it answers a lot of questions. Uh, because uh, a couple of years ago and a year ago, when we were doing these shows, we were in a completely different environment. Uh, so when the market crashed in 2022, it was crashing with positive stock bond correlation. So again, the conclusions are different. Here, conclusions are that, okay, when this crash happened, bonds were bidding. And you need to watch that all the, all, all, all the time. So I hope uh, what you take away from this um, uh, rant uh, <laughs> that I'm doing is that even, even if you are not trading bonds, you must watch what bonds are doing. And bond traders are quite smart people. Uh, so it's always good to know what they are doing. Um, for, for, for our example, of course, when futures page uh, uh, will be available, uh, then, then you can do the same thing with uh, ZN and ES correlations, because that's what I actually do for, for my personal. Uh, but uh, SPY and TLT work perfect. There's no need for people who don't want to analyze futures. There's no need to go to futures. It doesn't matter that I'm using futures for everything. SPY and TLT will work just fine. So, so now, uh, I hope it answered the correlations uh, because the uh, first peak was in the end of June. Uh, I'm talking about stock bond correlations. And then the second leg uh, was uh, in the beginning of July. So those who are more aggressive and uh, even uh, more longer term actually had uh, warning signs from uh, end of June. And what uh, correlations were positive, but it peaked in end of June or mid, mid to end June, and uh, then it started going down. Uh, and uh, I know people who, uh, when uh, then they saw the signs, they just uh, started reducing equities, which is very smart to do. Uh, I, I, again, I'm, I'm more of a, when, I, when it comes to my trading, I'm more, I'm more of a uh, intraday trader, so I don't have uh, usually uh, overnight exposure, only options, uh, and for options, I have different strategies, because for options, I, I mean, one of the two. Uh, either I want to coll collect premium and theta, or if if I do directional moves, I also structure my trades uh, so they move pretty slowly. So, so but for those who are holding ETFs or equities, yeah, when you see uh, stock bond correlation peaking and uh, reversing, uh, no need to sell everything, but uh, this is the time to reduce your exposure. So this was what I wanted to say about um, 